Oh wow, that's got some hella droop bro. All right chaps, welcome to Nerdberg Ring, Nerdberg Ring updates. Part two, the, the final part. We've got some spicy bits to add onto the M3. We're going to the Nurburg ring in just a couple of weeks. So what's this then? This is a carbon fiber, yeah, it's a CSL replica. So the CSL came with an airbox like this from the factory, yeah. We're doing a few other bits as well. We're getting rid of the MAF, uh, the mass airflow meter. We're replacing it with a map sensor and a inlet air temperature sensor. Kind of modernizing that a little bit, which is what the CSL also had. What else are we doing? We've got some nice coilovers to go on but they're currently still on another vehicle, so we're not putting them on today. But at some point, we'll have to get uh, both vehicles up here and do a, do a switcheroo. We've got some Bilstein Club Sport coilovers to go on, which are very juicy coilovers. Let's get started working anyway. I'm going to start pulling bits off, strut brace and all that. Oh, I need to make sure I've got all the pieces as well for the puzzle, because there's been quite a few pieces to collect from this. I got most of the information I got off of M3 cutters for them. Loads of people on there to help you out, show you how to do this. So all the supplementary parts that we've got with this airbox, it's a real mix of genuine BMW. Yeah. Genuine, venuine. And then just eBay. Cheapest on eBay. So this is a General Motors spec map sensor. One bar, please. This is an intake air sensor which goes into the air box itself. It measures the temperature of the air going into the air box. And then I should have a pigtail and a plug for that. But guess what? I can't find it. I bought most of this stuff at the start of the year, a long time ago. And I found most of it, but not all of it. So these CSL breathers, some new hose clamps. I'm going to start by just taking things apart, I think. Yeah, it's always the best way, isn't it? Great champion, what are you doing today? Best fit in the BMW box from the Skyline. BMW gear boxings. Because you're in the BMW corner, so I'll allow it for today. This goes in here, in the uh, vacos area, I think. We start taking things apart. That's the best thing to do, isn't it, first? Yeah? Of course it is. Well, that took a lot longer than what I expected. It's half ten at night now. The dog's kicking off because she's not in bed. Gonna have to leave it for tonight. So I didn't get the airbox on. It's in situ. I could pass it off on. Uh, I could pass it off on Instagram. Maybe it's being fitted. But yeah, filthy job. That. I don't know. I got some dirty. But yeah, we'll get this finished off tomorrow. Get the wiring and stuff done as well. Hopefully, I can find that plug. If not, I'll just order another one. Probably best just order another one anyway. Eh? Yeah, we'll get all this sorted tomorrow. I'll see you then. Uh, we're a day in the future, but don't worry, we won't be here for long. Cutting this one real short. Spent today pissing about, and I didn't want to show you because I've been pissing about for that long with these bloody clips, just trying to get the airbox mounted, pissing about with a dipstick, pissing about with the uh, breather hoses and things that go underneath, just pissing about with everything. It's just been shit. It's just been pure shit. I'm having a problem at the minute where I can't get the airbox onto the um, little, well, what would you call it? The rubbers that go between the, the inlet, well, the throttle bodies, the individual throttle bodies. Uh, I can't get it to sit right. What keeps happening is I tighten it up one side and maybe work my way down, or if I go on the outside and try and work the way in. At some point, one of the Jubilee clips will kind of slip, and instead of clamping down around here instead of clamping down around here it forces it out 
because they don't have any kind of art world tips on them like the factory ones do. Yeah, originally I was just going to reuse the clips on one side. I've only bought six of the BMW Jubilee clips, but yeah, it's just been shit. It's just been shit every step of the way. Anyway, it's nearly got to 10 o'clock again. And I'm just like, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. So, yeah, come back to it tomorrow or something. I've ordered a pigtail today for the intake air temperature sensor. Hopefully that'll be here to tomorrow or the day after. Well, I'll see you tomorrow probably. Hopefully I have a, a clearer mind and can get this done. But it's, it's been pissing me the piss off. You piss off. Tomorrow, I'll see you there. Day three. <laughs> it's another... Half past nine, oh, that's five to ten. It's another late one. I've not done any videoing because I just struggled again getting this on. I've got Ed to give me an hand. In the end, I slackened all of these off and attached them to the airbox and then forced them onto the throttle bodies themselves. But uh, I'm a bit worried that I might have got in the way of the actual throttle. Um, there's, a, there's a rail that runs between the throttle bodies to keep them all in sync and, you know, bits of mechanism going on. So. A lot of rotating parts there, and I've not really... Uh, I've tried to account for it, but I'm a bit worried that my uh, throttle might get stuck. And with it being electronic throttle, I can't just... And no ECU, and, you know, I can't just, you know, rev it and find out. So that's a bit annoying, but... It has been semi-successful, so the airbox is installed now. All the breather pipes are on. That part's done. I'm on to the wiring now. So I've not got the pigtail yet for the intake sensor. Hopefully that comes tomorrow. And I've just been on with the map sensor. That's pretty much all wired in now. If there's a few guides online, I've been following a few of them, just uh, this is a ECU works one. What's that soldering iron? Oh. This has been one of the most fiddly things I've ever done, getting that airbox on. It was just ridiculously difficult to get on, but it's on there now, so meh. Put that on there, bit of heat shrinkings. I soldered these connections as well. as. Thinking of maybe crimping them in. Some of them you've got to splice, some of them are brand new. Yeah, I didn't have the technology to do any crimpings as much, so... Not with the old soldering. Hopefully it'll be alright. Sweet. So, I still need to wire in the intake air temperature sensor. They go into the MAF. You know, I could just de-pin this or I could... I could remove the MAF entirely. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. The wires will just be about long enough, so I might not have to fuck about too much. But yeah, the map sensor's fully wired in now, so that's good. I can leave for the day happy. Put a T-piece into the, the vacuum line here. Then this tube goes to the, the map sensor, obviously. But, yeah, it's coming together. Anyway, I'll pick this back up when I've got the ECU back and when we've got that pigtail for the intake air temperature sensor. And then we can try and start it up, see what happens, yeah? Just two wires away, that's all we are, two wires away. And then ECU, of course, yeah? Another day on Danny E46 channel. I'm not even sure what video this is, I'm continuing. I've made that many videos over the past few weeks and had that little time to edit them. Pigeons have returned. Bastards. Oh, I spent last night with Matt, DC5 Matt. We were um, doing gearbox things on the bastard. It's got a new clutch in it now. Long story short, it's got a new clutch in it. We're going to ignore the fact that I bought a light and flywheel for it and it didn't quite fit and also the fact that I cut down all of my flywheel bolts to fit the light and flywheel and then found out it wouldn't work with my clutch and then got to this stage now. But the gearbox is back on. We've got a lot to do today chaps and not a lot of time to do it. So we're at Castle Coombe tomorrow in the E46. We need to have this ready to go by a close of business Thursday, today's Tuesday. I'm at Coombe tomorrow, and then on Friday, we're doing a test day, and then racing two days at Snetterton, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, another North Falking about weekend. That's two of the bastards. Get out! So, we've got to get this back together. The gearbox is on just about. It needs bolts putting in, start a motor putting on. It needs the prop shaft going on. It needs the exhaust reconnecting. And then it needs to get its ass off of that ramp. We need to get this out of the way, before we can do that, we need to wire up uh, the last sensor for the airbox. So the airbox is installed, it just needs the 
uh, sensor for the intake air temperature setting up, the map uh, sensor is already wired in and the ECU's arrived as well so the black one needs to go here, we need to rob the coilovers from it. We also need to try and get the BCs from this onto that but apparently the top mounts might be differently but we'll figure it out when we get there. So this car needs to be on the ramp without any coilovers on it and then we need to do the wheel alignment on this to finish the day. Double check there's nothing wrong since the track day at Croft. Yeah, busy day, we've got about seven hours and then we've got to drive down to near Gloucester, spending the night with Si. It'll be his DC5 will be there tomorrow as well and we'll be doing a what's it like to drive on his Mugen DC5, very, very posh DC5. But yeah, a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it. So, first job I guess is to get this back together. So the gearbox is on, just about, just needs bolts, fingering in, shifter putting back on, um, mounts putting back in, and yeah, then we'll be able to drive it off the ramp. 11 o'clock, we need to set off for down south, no later than six really, seven at a push. Yeah, because I want to get a kebab, right? That's my goal for tonight, I want to get a kebab. There's a kebab house down there, like there's a naughty one. I want a kebab. And that's what I want to finish the day with, a kebab. What, really? Chicken, mine, not a, it's not a donor, no. That M3 over there, the black one, that's a donor. No, we're just having a chicken one. Chicken shisha, please. Listen, I know I said we've got a lot of stuff to do and no time to do it, so we shouldn't be fannying about, but this, this is important. If anything, this is priority one. Well, that was a good 15 minutes wasted. <laughs> I think the guy who removed the grills didn't realise they come apart in two pieces. Tried to rag them out in one piece, which means that the clips just are all snapped. So, no bueno. Tried to recycle these black centres with the chrome outers, but nah, I wasn't having it. So, got to get another set, but it can sit in the barn looking pretty. No es bueno that, but looks better. It let me feel happier looking at it every day. Oh a year. We're just on with the final touches for the CSL style airbox conversion. So I'm just wiring in the intake air temperature sensor, which goes underneath the airbox, just, just down there. So the intake air temperature is normally read through the, the MAF housing, just like it is on the MR2. But we're changing it to um, you know the MAP sensor and we're we're basically getting rid of the MAF, but we're still need to know what the temperature of the air is coming into the engine so there's two wires here number one and three on the plug just uh, just gonna solder them in here I don't have any um, crimps I've got into crimping lately but I've not got any not the little cheap things you know soldering always looks better but it just scares me when it doesn't flex you know um, cause things move don't they and solder tends not to but. I don't know. I think there's probably some arguments in the comments for that soldering versus uh, crimping stuff in motorsport applications. But yeah, I'm going to solder it anyway. I'm going to use Ed's posh uh, Milwaukee soldering iron again, which I've conveniently left there from the other night. Oh, the ECU is back in as well, so that's all good. Just before I solder this in, I just want to check that it works. The, the pin numbers on this EV1 connector look backwards to me. So I just want to check, see if I get an IAT reading out of that. So I'll just plug it in, uh, put the battery on, just ignition on and then connect to the onboard. Uh, I'll plug my Bluetooth onboard thing in and let's see if it works. All right, the ignition's on. Goodbye. Just uh, give it a moment to, con ooh, ah, okay. So does that confirm? Oh no, there we go. So it came on very late. Strange, isn't it? Coolant temperature 12 degrees C and the air temperature is 20, which sort of makes sense. All right, I'll take that. Looks like it's working. So we'll get it soldered up, do all the final sanity checks, get the intake duct on, and then we can fire it up and have a little listen before moving it onto the ramp and tearing all of its suspension off, tearing all the suspension off of that black one, putting it all back together, Aligning the car and driving down to Gloucester. Yeah, buzzing. 
Right, it's time to start the car up and see if it works. I've just been checking that my hose clamps aren't in the way of the um, throttle body assembly. I don't think it is. Well, I guess we'll find out if the throttle gets stuck on or if it won't rev. But let's fire it up and make sure it runs and see if, yeah, see if it seems happy enough. Well, it runs all right. It's not been run for a couple of weeks. Sounds pretty happy. All right, I'm gonna go for a little test drive in the E46 now, just to see how it runs, make sure it can do what, 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 what. Just before we start pulling it apart, yeah? Start pulling that one apart. Let's go for a little rip. See how she gets on. Definitely sounds a lot more throaty. About 3,000 revs in second gear. Sensors functioning properly or whatever, but yeah, it seems okay. Right, we're on to the, the last part of this video now, which is getting this stripped down, getting that stripped down, making two of one. I've just nearly had a really bad time. I mean, well, I'm not bothered too much, but I, uh, I've done this a few times now. I keep driving into this ramp, which is unfortunate. I just feel like it's stuck a little bit, but. No, nope, no damages, all good. <laughs> yeah, I've done that a few times now. Because it's right at the end, there's no way really to swing around. Maybe I could have done with doing it one over, then I'd have room to swing around and then have a car here instead and have that as the work area, but right, it's up now, isn't it? Here's what it is. All right, both cars are lifted in the air. Just wanna show you something first, right? Just look at the arch gap on the front and rear. Not too bad on the rear, the droop is what we're looking at, which is how far the shock extends when there's no weight on it. But look at the front, you can just squeeze four fingers in there, right? It's, uh, there's not a lot of droop. Where's the droop at, yeah? Let's go and have a look at the bill steins. Oh wow, that's got some hella droop, bro. You know, I can get probably about 10 fingers in there. The rear is pretty similar to the BCs, but the front, Look at that droop. Now droop does one or two things, right? It's gonna make the pictures of the car look slightly less cool because we might not cog a front wheel, turn it in places. Might still do it, might not. But what that'll help us with massively is the bumps and the Norschleifer, yeah? One of the main reasons I wanted these coilovers, Bill Stein Club Sports, a few years old, we're expecting them to look a bit minging, but they should work really well. Is they should perform so much better than the BCs at the Nordschleife, yeah, on, on the Nordschleife. BCs are great, don't get me wrong, for the money. I paid about 400 quid for these BCs four years ago, second hand, obviously, and they've, they've done me pretty well, but it's time for something more serious. And it's what's on this car right now. We're going to spend tomorrow looking at things like rebound and damping and all, these are two-way adjustable, so yeah, we're gonna try and get them right, but just look at the droop, yeah? Good shit. All right, start on the rear, because it's easier. 
So, have a look at this then. Much difference, yeah, quite a lot of differences. The shaft, the damper is a lot bigger on the Bilstein. The springs, there's, I mean this is a one I put in afterwards, it's not a BC spring. This one is, I uh, don't even know. It's about 14 and a half kilos. This one's 140 Newton meters, which is basically 14 kilos. Different spring design, obviously. This is just more like a coilover spring, but it's in a, you know, in board, or it probably shouldn't be, but it's in the job all right. And it rattles about a bit, so I'm hoping this one will rattle less. And this has got the adjuster at the top, whereas the adjuster was at the bottom on this. Maybe it should have been at the top, but I don't know. But another crucial difference is, these are only two years old, by the way. Because you're wondering about how these Bill Steins will last. Nordschleife technology, but yeah, they're oxidized like mad. So we've got the Gucci top mounts, and we've got our two-way adjustment at the top there for uh, rebound and dampening. Dampening or damping? Damping. It's just damping, isn't it? Um, but yeah, if we peel the foreskin back slightly, if we can. No, we can't. Well, the, the actual shaft diameter here, you can feel, you have to trust me, a lot bigger. As you'd expect, obviously, this is a budget £600 coil over this is a £4,000 retail. You know, this costs five times more than this. You know, for, crazy, right? These BCs are probably 10 year old now, maybe. Well, we're due a clean up, aren't they? But we're not going to clean them up, we're just going to put them straight on the bastard. We might have some issues with the front top mounts, but I'm sure it'll be alright. We'll figure something out. Yeah, I'm going to get the rears on now, and then we'll move to the front. The front might give us some issues, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there, eh? Alright, we're all installed. Have a play with them. Knobs tomorrow. Twiddle my knobs to get the right settings and all that. So I don't want it too springy, I don't want it too stiff. You know, so twist the knobs either way and hopefully get it right. Onto the front. The front might be a twat because there's a pinch bolt at the bottom, which is actually something you're supposed to replace every time you send it on in there, but obviously we're not gonna do that, are we? Yeah. But yeah, the front's could be a bastard. Let's uh let's have a look. Oh you know, they've not held up too well at all. Lovely, long, long shock of that. Damn. We've got some brake cooling we might want to take off as well. Where does that go? Oh, that's cool. It's got an actual... Yeah, we should take that off. Maybe not today. But there's um, an actual backing plate for the disc where this tube comes in through the fog light, look. It actually goes onto the back of the disc, so yeah, we should definitely rob that. It's very different to mine, it's only a little bit newer, this car. Mine's a 52, this is a 03, so it's only like six months in the cars, but this has got the fancy new ABS that people love to put in aftermarket stuff. With my ABS, it's over this size, next to the uh, ECU and everything, just chilling there. Well, just on with the front, so just pointing out the differences again. We knew the shock would be a good bit longer, but it's about three inch longer overall the, the shock length helper spring at the bottom not the top which proves the theory of it doesn't matter where you put the helper spring which you know i've seen i've read people arguing on the internet before saying so it must be at the top so people say it must be at the bottom but either come from bill stein like that i presume uh the clickers are on the bottom which is maybe annoying maybe not they seem a bit i don't know they're all right i thought they're a bit stiff but Again, not done too well on the old oxidization corrosion front, have they? Another thing that annoyed me as well. Looks like the way you adjust the camber is via the bolts itself, rather than with a BC having this top plate, which you slide across. On the Bilsteins, you get this kind of Bermuda Triangle looking thing here. And Pythagoras has been round, yeah? And what you need to do is kind of run it along on these little coach bolts, which is... Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to say it out loud, it looks just a bit naff really, isn't it? But maybe this is how the motorsports do. What happened though, I didn't expect this to drop out, and it looks like it's happened to someone else before. I've lost one of these little coach bolts. It looks like someone else lost one in the past as well, because 
there was just a normal bolt in one of them. Well, uh, it's still a grade 8.8, .8. it's just still a proper bolt, but I'm gonna have to try and find one now as well, an M8, decent grade 8 M8 bolt. Bar stewards, but yeah, coming back together now. Both the front drop links were loose on the M3. I had a bit of a rattling noise on the way back from Donington, and the uh, drop links had worked themselves loose, so that's not good. I've got proper locking nuts and everything, but yeah, less than ideal problem, but. Yeah, let's get this back together because we're running out of time. It's 5 p.m., 10 past 5. I want to be leaving 7 at the absolute latest, so... Yeah, let's get... <laughs> yeah, it might be a bit too uh, ambitious, that, but... Everything's gone on pretty well so far. All the coil levels are off. No bolts will give me any grief, so we're all good. Just look at the difference in the shaft here. Let's pull the boot up a little bit. Oh, it's pretty... Uh, I don't know if that's just... Is that, this might just be a cover. I, I'm not sure, but... Look at the difference there, compared to that. Nuts. Uh, it doesn't say what spring rate the front ones are. Not that I can see anyway, unless it's rusted off. And these are 8 kilo on the front, so they'd be 80 newton metres in, in old money, but... I mean, I drove this car a little bit on the road, I drove it on track a couple of times as well, and it felt pretty good, so... We'll just go with it being alright. Dampers on the left side do look a bit more pagged, but... Yeah, I wish I had time to clean them up a bit, but I just don't have time. I've got some like, AC50 laying about, which would probably help preserve them once we get them clean, but I'll have to do like a strip down over winter, I think. Uh, just on me setting the cambers. So I put the maximum it would allow me to on the front just to see where it had land, and it landed on four degrees. So that sounds pretty good to me. The rear was pretty pathetic. You can tell I've not done the alignment on this for a while. Although we've changed shocks and springs, yeah, but the ride height's pretty much the same so it wouldn't change that much the camber it only had like two degrees on the back <laughs> of uh, yeah been a lot more aggressive than that these days so I'm gonna go four all around on the camber that's what I'm aiming for and I'm doing the back now with just one tool which is quite nice the Kennypex <laughs> yeah Cobras doing uh, doing some good work one tool full of them all so, yep, camber's nearly set, and then strings on, do the toe, and get out of here, yeah. Well, just about done. Had to have a little play with the EP3 as well, because these wheels that I'd bought require tuna nuts. No crust. Yeah, but managed to find some, so. I was panicking a bit, the M3's all good to go. I've just finished packing it up. Got all the rims in, need bother. Even have plenty of spare room for tools and shite. Oh, where's my tarp actually? It's a tarp! I want to take my tarp. Should I take my coffee cup? Just in case I can rob some hot water. But yeah, we're done. So, hopefully that doesn't stay like that for too much longer. That's the winter project. I know we've got other winter projects, but this is a, another winter project, probably. Got my standard interior back into it, make it more like a, a pretty road car, a fun weekend blaster with its cabron and then, you know, cabron fibre, the eventually and all that stuff. It'd be quite a nice little road car, and then I've robbed the racy bits for Roy Race, yeah. So, Castle Coombe tomorrow, testing out the Bill Steins, testing out the new airbox that we've got on. The alignment, I did four degrees, a negative camber all the way around and uh, a little bit of toe in at the back, a little bit of toe at the front. Just steady away on the toe, nothing drastic. But yeah, it should work well, I think. I ran out of time, my time budget way over. I said I wanted to leave at six, seven at the latest. It's now nine o'clock. So that's, uh, yeah, it's just coming up to nine o'clock. I'm gonna leave, so I've got about a three, three and a half hour drive down there, get some kip, and then I'll see you in the morning for Castle Coombe. Be myself, Simon with his DC5, dark side of there with a few cars as well and it's actually an influencer day which yeah I know I didn't fully understand the deal when I signed up but hey maybe we'll make some connections yeah might make some connections eh <laughs> I'll see you there and then we're straight back up the day after to get this ready and then the weekend north falking about at Snetterton exciting times I'll see you there well I didn't get very far <laughs> Car's been uh, 
going into limp mode on the uh, motorway. I got about 20 miles in and it started limping, so not good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we made it. It was a pain in the ass, but I made it. We got down here at like just after two, uh, two a.m.s. Yeah, does the car like to tell me it would only go in the twelve-hour clock now? I don't like the twelve-hour clock. Do you? I'm very tired. About three hours sleep. But we're on our way to Castle Coombe, and I'll see you there in the next video for our track day. Yeah, buddy.